Good evening. The November 16 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of the City of Longview is now called to order. Commissioner Noon will lead us in the invocation. Please stand. Please join me in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, again, we have so many things to be thankful for, and we ask that you forgive us where we fail to acknowledge it and to acknowledge you. We're thankful for this nation that we live in, the freedoms that we have, and uh, just pray, Lord, that you will give this nation another chance that we can restore the many freedoms that, that we have lost. And we ask that you be with this meeting tonight, help us to do things according to your will, and forgive us in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Please join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting in October. Has everyone had a chance to look at them? And if so, I'll entertain a motion in a second, if there are no corrections. Make a motion to approve as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Now it's citizen comment time on our agenda. This portion of citizen comments are comments made other than the public hearing items that we have on the agenda tonight. If you wish to speak on an item that's on the agenda, please wait until that time to speak and always begin by stating your name and address for the public record. Any committee, I mean, any citizen comments? Excuse me, I'm running into the speaker here. Hearing none, uh, we'll go to the next item, which is the consent agenda. The items on the consent agenda are plats that meet the requirements of the City of Longview subdivision ordinance. These items will be approved with one vote unless any member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, any member of the public, or the applicant would like an item removed from consent and placed on the regular agenda for discussion. Would anyone like an item to be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda for discussion tonight? If not, we'll entertain a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as presented. Motion approved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Now the regular agenda, the purpose of this meeting is to hear all pertinent testimony of those in support of and in opposition to the applications before the commission. Tonight is the first of two public hearings required to approve a change in zoning. The commission also considers plats. The procedure for public hearing items to be followed will be, the public hearing will be opened and testimony will be heard in the following order. First from the staff, then the applicant, and then from the general public, and that includes those in support and in opposition to the request. If you're part of a large group with a common interest, we ask that you appoint a spokesperson rather than have each individual restate the same information. And when addressing the commission, Remember to state your name and address and try to limit your comments to five minutes. When all sides have spoken, the public hearing on the matter will be closed and no further public discussion will be entertained. And after each public hearing is closed, the commission will vote on the request. Zoning request and the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation will go forward to the second public hearing, which will be conducted by the City Council on December 9. Now we're to the regular agenda item A, and Angela will introduce, introduce it, please. Thank you. A public hearing would be held to consider application 221-09. Woodway Park Subdivision Phase 3, followed by A Trailer Company, LLC, to plot approximately 8.206 acres of the Dolores Sanchez survey into 29 residential lots located on the south side of Fenton Road. Uh, the applicant is requesting to a plat um, to allow for 29 residential lots uh, located on the south side of Fenton Road. Um, there are a few items that need to be addressed prior to recording this plat. Um, replacing the fill and topsoil behind the curbs and establishing ground cover, um, as well as providing a letter of credit for the required sidewalks within this subdivision. Uh, staff does recommend a conditional approval of this plat with the following comments or requirements that he provides the, that letter of credit for the sidewalks as well as um, establishing ground cover and replacing that fill and topsoil behind the curbs. Uh, once all conditions are met, the plat would be considered approved. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. 
Is, is there only one entrance and exit into that plant that subdivision? Is that is correct, yes, sir. Okay, and this is fairly close to Spring Hill School, correct? Yes, sir, it is. Where, where the one that we approved a couple of years ago or a year or so ago was located right next to it, I think. Yeah, yes, and so y'all approved the zoning change. I can't remember. Y'all approved the zoning change actually in 2020, and so this is now the subdivision plotting, so the division of land, and so, yes, this is coming before y'all. Okay. Any commissioners have any additional questions of staff? The two prior streets adjacent to this one don't mm -hmm. have sidewalks, do they? That is correct. They do not. And it's because of the UDC now that we have this one that requires sidewalks. So it was part of the UDC, but it's actually a, a condition of the zoning change, the plan sure. development that a sidewalk be uh, required. Okay, thank you. We will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone that is here that would like to speak in support or in opposition of this item? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion in a second. I'll make a motion that we approve it with the staff recommendations that are attached to it. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries, thank you. Agenda item B has been removed, correct? Yes, ma'am. So we're moving to and removed by the applicant, and we will move now to the regular agenda item C. Angela, will you please introduce it? Yes, ma'am. This is a public hearing we held to consider application HL21-01 filed by Debbie Fontaine requesting a local historic landmark designation for a structure known as the Utsman Farmhouse located at 602 West South Street. Um, the applicant is requesting a local landmark designation for this property. Uh, if approved, this will be the 10th landmark, local landmark here in Longview. Uh, this building is located where State Highway 31 splits um, onto South Street and Spur 63. Uh, the structure is a minimal traditional home and was built in 1938 by R.J. Whittington and uh, for Mr. and Mrs. Marvin Utzman. Uh, min minimal traditional style homes were predominant in the 30s to the 50s uh, when it was replaced by the ranch style house. Um, it's, it's a very minimal house, simplistic, uh, not a lot of ornamentation. Um, it's The style typically includes a forward facing gable, small covered porch, no eaves. Um, and wood siding typically, um, but it could be brick or shake um, or stone. Uh, they are generally uh, asymmetrical uh, with the front entrance off the center. Uh, the property where the house sits was originally owned by O.H. Methven and purchased by Marvin Utzman's father, George Utzman Jr. Local landmarks must meet one of the fo following criteria listed in Article C, Section 2.03 of the City of Lumbee UDC. The Utzman House embodies distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type period or method of construction. The Historic Preservation Commission, along with staff, recommends approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. It's staying in the same location, isn't it? That is correct. It is I staying. what all was going on around there in the recent recent weeks, around that, that land around it. And there was another property that was just adjacent to it, just to the, uh, the east. Oh, well, that's where the police station's going. So if you see, are you talking about oh, okay. all the construction? Really yeah, that's okay. where the police station's okay. going. And so uh, Ms. Fontaine has done a great job of cleaning up uh, her site that she purchased, but the police station is going directly to, okay. yeah, to the east of her. So pardon my ignorance, so what's the, the benefit of this designation for the property or for the city or like? Um, well, local designation, um, it comes with, you know, um, well, first of all, there's a lot of recognition with it, um, but we do offer incentives um, from a city level. Um, we waive all building permit fees, application fees, anything related to development, um, all those fees are waived. In, in what way does the designation constrain the city in the future, if at all? 
So it, it does constrain the applicant, um, and applicants are aware of that um, right off the bat. Um, but you know, any time there are changes that are made um, specifically to the exterior of the building, then it do, they do have to get a certificate of appropriateness through the local historic landmark commission. Does it constrain the city though? I mean, if, if South Street needed to be widened or anything like that, does the lo local historic designation constrain the city? No, I mean, now if it was widened and they, and through the widening process, you know, they had to demolish that landmark, then maybe yes. Um, but I mean, I don't think that the street would ever be widened. It's a four lane or five lane roadway, so. Right, just curious yeah. about no, the designation, I, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, how much uh, property is next to, is there any construction on it? Um, so what do you, like the? As far as how much acreage is the house set on? I'm not sure how, many, how much acreage, and Ms. Fontaine can probably answer that if she would like to come to the podium. the applicant to come at this time? Yes. Thank you, introduce <coughs> Thank yourself and you. give us your address. I'm Denny Fontaine, 1409 Columbia Drive. And um, the, the property is 4.69 acres. And a year ago last month, whenever we purchased that property, it was covered in the, a lot of garbage and debris. 21 tons of garbage have now been removed from the property. And inside the, the subject that we're talking about, both homes were supposed to be demolished according to the bank and the environmental appraiser. They were both deemed uninhabitable because they could not physically get in either one of the homes. One of them we had demolished right away, uh, very dangerous. A lot of people were still crawling in the windows no matter how we boarded it. But once we got into this home and cleaned for four months and removed eight tons of garbage um, from this house, we found not one rotten wooden plank on the inside. Praise God for the garbage up to the ceiling. It took all the black mold, all the moisture from the eight broken windows. And um, on the outside of the home, it looks terrible right now, uh, but there is only nine w rotten wooden planks on the outside of the home. And they've already found the wood down in Houston from another 1930s home that will be put back on this home. Um, we would love to save this house. The inside is unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. It is the most gorgeous wooden um, shiplap um, home that you can ever see with the just beautiful wooden floors. The view of it overlooking the green in the intersection of 31, it's the most gorgeous sunsets that um, you could possibly see in Longview. But we'd like to rename it the Sunset Chateau and make it a, a high t a tea and pie room. And the other plans for the bakery are, I have edible art, especially cakes and cookies. And this property was purchased to build a larger facility. And this was a detour that um, it was just a diamond that was sitting there that no one knew what it was until we got it cleaned out. And we found a, a, a beautiful piece of history with a lot of documentation inside dating back to 1873. Any questions? <laughs> so you are planning on building next to it? Yes, sir. Um, we Johnson Pace has been working with me for the last year. Like many small businesses in construction, we do have that project on hold right now just because of the economy. But um, we are going to build a uh, a facility in the back that is a manufacturing bakery that is open for tourism and six commissary kitchens and 25 food truck um, plug-in park there where it'll be an entertainment hill and at any given time we could have the food trucks and those six commissary kitchens serving our future 450 police officers over there so it'll be a family fun entrance that could be beautified as you enter Longview, it's downtown area. And um, I think it would definitely be a beautiful representation at that intersection instead of the junkyard that was there. I think that'll be supported by the city. We hope so, we do hope so. Any other questions of the applicant at this time? Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. All right, we will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak in support of this request? If so, please come to the podium and give your name and address.
Seeing none, is there anyone that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, are there any additional questions or comments? We will now close the public hearing and entertain a motion and a second. Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Staff update, Angela. Yes, um, so the item on Page Road uh, that PNZ recommended denial on, uh, that applicant withdrew his request before it went to council. Uh, so the other four items were approved by city council. Thank you. Any additional comments, questions? That concludes today's meeting and we are adjourned. Thank you.